and now to bring the good news in our message this morning is our pastor, our spiritual teacher, our friend and combolo, <laughs> Reverend John Scott. Please welcome him. Good morning, Good morning, morning friends, friends and combolo. I love, I love, thank you, thank you, Sandy, for that wonderful introduction. And good morning, morning, morning worldwide family. It's a joy to add my own words. So welcome to the beautiful Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in balmy, warm December, Jamaica. You know, before I, 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 I get into my encouragement, I have to tell you something about Professor Barry Chevans. All through our lives, we meet people that... Um, are our coaches in some kind of way. And I learned a very life-altering message from him. I don't even think he knew how, how transformative it was for me. I was at a dinner party at a mutual friend's house. And this was back in the, in the early years when I had just joined the Temple of Light and never knew nothing about truth and, you know, speaking the truth. So I was laying forth warm about irresponsible fatherhood. You know, Jamaican men who just don't look after their children. And after I had, I had talked about it for a long enough time, he said, John, can I share something with you? So I said, yes, sir. He said, stop saying it. It's not true. Jamaican men love them, picnic them, and want to be the best fathers they can. That is the truth. And when you start believing that, you will be amazed how much of it you will observe and how much of it you will see happening. <laughs> Friends will never send out a word for the entire dinner party. May just eat the food and shut my mouth. Would you believe that next morning, and know that, you know, those of us that study the science of man know that this is how it is. When you set your intention for something, the universe moves to support you. Next morning, on my way down to Harbour Street to where I used to work, I passed four men during the course of my drive down, all carrying their little children. And where were they going? At least three of them were going to the children's hospital. I picked up everybody that I could in my little 2 by 2 that I was driving at the time and dropped them there. And I can't tell you that it was my first lesson in this teaching. We have to look for what we want to experience. Isn't that so true? Which brings me to my encouragement, which I've titled this morning, Wise Men Still Seek Him. And I wanted to start by sharing with you that, you know, I never cease to be amazed at how fervently we turn to God when trouble catch we, when things are not going the way we want them to go, we look for God, we find, we, we find, try to find that presence and power. But of course, a lot of people look for it outside themselves. Maybe we could follow the example of a little boy who received a ball for Christmas. And he said to his mother, Christmas morning, I'm going outside to play ball with God. And she said, oh, that's interesting, darling. How are you going to do that? He said, it's very simple. You know how children can explain things to you as if, duh. You mean to say you don't know that? You're 40, 100 years old and you don't know? Very simple, he said. You just throw the ball up in the air and God throws it back. <laughs> oh, the lessons we can learn from little ones, eh? It's amazing. It is related to that a, a, a man was traveling across the Arabian desert and he had an Arab guide. And one evening the guide rolled out his prayer rug and knelt to pray. So the traveler, being a, a cynical um, man, said, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to pray. So the traveler persisted and said, to whom or to what? So the, the, the guide said, to God. So the, the, the traveler said, and have you seen him? He said, no, uh, no, I haven't. He said, well, then no such thing can exist. 
and with that he turned and went into his tent to retire for the night. Next morning when he awakened, it appeared that the camels had broken loose of their tethers and had been, you know, running wild around the camp. So he said, he called the guide from his tent and said, the, the, the camels have broken loose and they've been stomping, stomping around the, the camp. So the guide said, did you see them? He said, no, but you can see their footprints in the sand. And just then the sun was rising in the east and the Arab laid out his prayer rug. And as he knelt, he said, look, the footstep of God. So my friend, I really wonder how many of us really love God for God's sake and look for God a lot of people look for it outside themselves. But I wonder how many of us really recognize that if we are seeking that, that union and that, that oneness with the, with the infinite and divine presence, that we have to follow that star, that, that astral star of divine wisdom that leads us to where the Christ, the Son of the living God, resides. And where is that child to be born? That child is to be born anew at this time in the cradle of our hearts. And it's, you see that whole Jesus story, it's so tender and so beautiful. And it doesn't matter whether it actually is um, a fairy tale and a myth in terms of the, the, the chronology and the, the, the history of the, you know, the years and the time and the, what have you. What is beautiful about it is the symbolism because it's your story. It's my story. It's the story of how, like all of humanity, we look for meaning. We look for that, that thing which unites us with something so awesome and so beautiful and so powerful that if we could just understand what, that, what power we have at our command... Jesus the Master himself, as he said, we could do even greater things. Because in each of us is the power and the potential for healing, for touching, for blessing, for prospering, for uplifting, for inspiring, for showing others the footsteps of God in the desert of our lives. And so, friends, this Christmas, I, I just want us to be aware of the power that's at our, our disposal, and to use it as we have promised ourselves in our mission statement, to really lift other people up. Because when something like this year happens and throws the whole world upside down, you know, in Jamaica we say, when trouble catch your picnic shoes fit you? Me, a pic a picnic shot? Okay, shoes better. What I bet is it not fit. But you know, friends, those of us who study the science of mind, we have been taught that God is not a power that takes hold of our lives from outside. It is within. It is within our minds, within the realm of thought, and that in order to change things, we have to change our minds and keep them changed. We change our minds all the time. I decided, I've tried to decide on four different shirts this morning. But I changed my mind. Hey, hey. You don't know. <laughs> so we change, it's easy to change your mind. What is the challenge is that when you hit it, that you keep your mind changed. You keep your mind focused and centered on what it is that you have decided. And you know, I think back to that tender, beautiful story of Mary and, you know, as the story goes, Gabriel telling her that something is waiting to be born through you, something so beautiful and so wonderful. You ever thought what would happen if Mary did say no? None of the last 2,000 odd years would have happened. But Mary somehow knew 
that that which she was called to give birth to would change the course of history. She didn't know how, and she didn't know just how it was going to happen. But she said, be it done unto me. And so, my friends, this morning I want to ask you if there is something waiting to be born through you. And can you, like Mary, say yes? Just say yes, I am ready. I don't know quite how, but I am ready to bring it forth so that it can bless the world. You know, the scriptures tell us that God so loved that what? He gave his only begotten son. And that's a little mix-up of the words, you know. Because what is true is that Jesus and you and I were begotten only of the Father. And the truth that I bring you this morning is that you are begotten only of the same presence and power that begat Jesus, our brother. And God so loved that he gave you. He gave you as a gift to the world. Wow! Just think about that, my friends. You are God's gift to life. You are God's gift to the person sitting beside you, to the person that's in front of you at the supermarket, to the policeman who stops you and, and asks for your, your papers. You are God's gift. Yeah, I want to just do it to me. You are God's gift to the world. You, the only begotten son or daughter. So you see, the Christ was not Jesus' last name. The Christ is the principle of divine sonship or daughtership that makes you begotten only of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so you are God's treasured gift, and your assignment this Christmas, it may be a stretch for some people, but I'm going to give it to you anyhow. I want you to give something you treasure to someone you treasure. Now, it doesn't have to be expensive. I know diamonds are a girl's best friend. Not only a girl, my own too. But the treasure doesn't have to be something expensive. It may be your favorite book that's, that lives its life on your bedside table. And that you say, boy, I don't know, this book is out of print and I, 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 I really treasure it. Give it to someone you treasure. Or it may be something that your friend or family member has always admired. And I have a way of saying, it's okay, I'm going to leave it in my will for you. Give it to them this Christmas. Take it off the wall or out the cupboard or um, off, off wherever it is, off the bookshelf. And give it to someone. And in doing this, this is for me symbolic of God giving you, which is such a, you're such a treasured possession of the Almighty, to the rest of the world as a gift. You like that assignment? Yes, 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 yes. You are the treasure, you are the gift. And you know, when we begin to think about this awesome truth that we are the sons and daughters of God. When that, when that awakening happens in your consciousness, you begin to see everybody in your experience in a different light. Perhaps in the light of that star that illumined the coming of the Christ all those many centuries ago. One of the things that, that I find moving and emotional and, and just... It just blows my mind when, every time it happens. Uh, is in my ministry at the prisons in, in Jamaica, here in, in Kingston, when that truth dawns upon the participants in our class, change your thinking, change your life, as we call it, when those men realize that, yes, 
you know, because I have, we have uh, sometimes we, we greet them and we say, hello, Godson. And then I explain that that's not just a term of endearment. It is a term of endearment, but it's, it's, it's literally true. You are God's son. And them say me? And I say you. You say you don't know what me in here for. Me say no matter what you are in here for, and I don't give a damn, excuse the French. And God doesn't care either. You are not what you have done. You are not your past. You're not even the present. You are God's treasured possession. You belong to something so awesome and so beautiful. And so breathtaking in its power. And when you say to them, you can see them, their body language literally changes. You see men straightening up who are slouched. You see people's heads and chins going up and shoulders going back because the dawning in their consciousness is that God the living spirit almighty is the truth of who they are and I can tell you friends when it happens it's breathtaking I think when it happens, the same angels, the same messengers of love and peace and beauty that sang at the coming of Jesus the way sure, sing again. I swear I can walk across that prison courtyard and hear the sound of ancient chants because another one, another son of God has awakened to his spiritual magnificence. And so my, 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 my prayer, my wish, my deep, deep desire for each of you this Christmas is that if you haven't awakened to it yet, that you will wake up to the truth of your sonship and daughtership. And like Mary, you too are pregnant with the Christ potential. You too will give birth to something awesome that will bless the world and change the course of your history and maybe the history of those near to you, those people you treasure forever and ever. So my friends, to live your life from the lofty aspect of your inherent divinity is indeed your goal. And like the wise men that sought to find the Christ, that principle that binds us forever to the God presence and power and binds us to each other as the sons and daughters of this awesome presence, that that realization and that awakening and that truth will transform your life and lift you up on the wings of joy to a wonderful, wonderful celebration of the coming of the Christ. And you will be the purveyor of the good news, the good news that Jesus, the man lived, and he has moved on to do whatever he needs to do on the eternal upward spiral of life. But the Christ, which he said was the comforter that he would leave with us, lives within every human heart and in every situation so that that light, which is the light of the Christ, fills the entire world. And my, my prayer is that there will be no more dark places upon the face of the earth, that from east to west, from north to south, above, below, and within the consciousness of humankind, the light of the Christ will just chase all of the shadows of doubt and disbelief and hatred and prejudice and misunderstanding away. And as we say in our Declaration of Principles here in the Science of Mind, there will be a complete emancipation from all discord of every nature. And we believe that that goal, my friends, is sure to be attained by all. 
So I just want you to, to I want to just end with uh, a beautiful meditation done, uh, written by Ernest Holmes, um, who said, if we can come to feel that our lives are rooted in the divine spirit, that our minds and bodies are instruments of it, that our whole experience may become the movement of this spirit, this infinite wisdom, truth, and love through us, in our thoughts and in our actions, then we shall begin to feel safe. No more worry about what's happening in the society. We shall find that we are resting at night, that we sleep in peace and that wake and wake in joy and live in a consciousness of good. Unquote. And so in the chapter 22 of the Science of Mind, which is titled Finding the Christ, Holmes writes, and I quote, If we could stand aside and let the one perfect life flow through us, we could not help healing people. We must forget everything else and let our word be spoken with a deep inner realization of love, beauty, peace, poise, and power, and of the great presence of life at the point of our own consciousness. And his meditation is this. Be still. O oh soul, be still and know. Look unto the one and be illumined. Rejoice and be glad, for thy spirit lights the way. Lift up thine eyes and behold him, for he is fair to look upon. Listen to his voice, for he will tell thee of marvelous things. Receive him, for in his presence there is peace. Embrace him, for he is love. Let him tarry with thee, that thou mayest not be lonely. Take counsel from him, for he is wise. Learn from him, for he knows. Be still in his presence, and rejoice in his love forevermore. And so may we rejoice in that love which comes again and again, and that we celebrate every year. Can it be a deeper more meaningful celebration for us this Christmas as we seek to find the treasures of 2020 and as we leave it behind to set our intention to let our light so shine that others may see, see that we are the gift that like the wise men we sought and found the living God in the inner of our lives. And as Sandy said in our, her reading this morning, never ever will we have to say no room because our hearts are open and our lives are a living testimony to the glory and the greatness of that which called us into being and which sustains us in its own beauty, its own love, its own joy and its own perfection at our levels of unfoldment. Merry Christmas, my friends, when it comes. Please join us on Christmas Day, which is at 7.30, as Reverend Michael said, in the morning, when the star of Bethlehem arise. Come show me where the young child lay. Namaste and love you. <laughs>